Hello, my name is Jai Bang. You want to jig my show? My guest today is is Sister Cindy, Sister Cindy Cowan, a wonderful director from LA. Hi, Cindy. Welcome to the show today. Hi. How are you? Doing good. Welcome. So good to see you. Um. Okay. So um, can you tell me uh, tell me a, a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the entertainment business? Um. So I am a producer of film and TV, and um. I got started got a long time ago. This was not supposed to be my profession. I went to college, graduated with a degree in psychology, took that infamous year off, um, came out to Los Angeles, not knowing what I was gonna do, got fascinated with the business, um, started literally as a PA and worked my way up. And um, at the time, there were majors and mini majors um, that were financing movies. Majors were the studios. They were the, and at the time it was so different. We're talking over 20 years ago. Studio films were $10 million and more, which is far cry from what they are now. Mini majors were kind of, or the independents were like 3 million and under. And there was a whole of people not making the movies that were like five, six and 7 million. That was considered a very dangerous kind of financial model of how to make movies. And I just kind of said one day, I want to be them. I want to be in that world. And I started a company and five years after I started the company, we had gotten four Oscar nominations, um, Golden Globes, People's Choice. We won the United Nations Award, um, People's Choice Award. And that was it. It's, it was kind of a fluke. Wow, that's awesome, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so what films so what films have you produced? I've had a chance to, to work on. What films have I done? God, um, a lot. Um, I, you know, Traffic um, with Michael Douglas, um, If These Walls Could Talk with Demi Moore, Sharon Sissy Spacek, Very Bad Things with Christian Slater and Cameron Diaz, um, Jeremy Piven, John Favreau. Um, uh, I don't know, there's so many to, to choose from. Um, um, we did a movie with, um, I did a movie with Robert De Niro. I've done a movie with Woody Harrelson. I mean, there's a lot on the resume. Oh yeah. So what's like? What's like? Like to work to work to work with um with stars, celebrities. Are, are they nice to you on set? I mean, it must be awesome to work. You know, people of that nature. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's everybody's different. You know, some are great and very welcoming. Some are very professional and standoffish. Some of their own quirks. But yeah, you know, I. I think people are people, so yeah, they're good. Yeah, so now I know you, now, now I, I know you worked with work, work time, work with um, time Lester, right? A, a great actor, you know, so obviously. So yeah. Um, yeah. How did his how, how did his his death affect you? Because it's really hard to me, you know, he was one of the greatest actors, you know, from Friday. Um, you know, did you you know did you did you did you you know? <laughs> so yeah. So how did his, his you know? His yeah, death? I mean, Tiny was like my brother. Um, I was the godmother to his daughter. Um, I'm used to Tiny being at my house at least twice a week. Um, you know, we kind of, uh, he was my big brother, so his death very much affected me. It was to see how this virus can um, affect you and how quickly it can take you out was quite shocking. And um, I, just, I don't think I've still processed Tiny's death fully. Yeah. So how was the COVID affecting you? Is, is it affecting uh, you and movies right now? Is this coronavirus? Yeah, um, all of our movies have stopped. We're, you know, nothing will film. Um, I do movies, some of my movies with Sony, those are my next movies, and they won't start filming potentially maybe this summer. It all depends on the virus. Um, a lot of people's films are stopping and starting and, um, they, you know, it's costing huge amounts of dollars to um, the studios. So for at least right now, the studio that I'm with has decided no movies will go for at least the next five months. I see a lot. That's, yeah, that's kind of sad, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, what advice, so what advice can you give people that want to be, be in the business, the business of like, like, like me as an actor? What advice can you give us as an actor, you know, that want to have a profession in the business now because they want to, you know, be like a star? What advice can you give us, you know? especially me, you know. I mean, doing just what you're doing, get in front of the camera, let people see you, know you, um, reach out to as many people as you can, see if they answer back. Um, 
you know, and then do a reel. Um, you know, there's so many student films out there that are always filming and they're always looking for different actors to play different roles. And what we as producers look at is, can you act? You know, is there a range of acting? You know, um, can you be a different look each time? You know, can you do accents, et cetera, et cetera. And so it, it's, the more you can have on a reel, the better it is. Okay. And then obviously secure an agent or a manager if you can, and then go through breakdowns, go through anything that's filming or working, including plays, anything that you can do. And, um, you know, it's just getting out there in front of people. Okay. Yeah, because I've actually I, 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 I been, been a movie called, um, I was a movie called um, um, a Much Most Like a Handful with Ruth of Martin Lawrence, and I did a movie as an actor, and I did a movie called um, <laughs> And that was good. So I was good. I was able to meet them. Yeah. yeah. So that was wonderful. Yeah. And then I was I was I was start my start my my podcast show. So yeah. So I'm, good so, for you. Yeah, so I'm doing pretty good. So you know. So yeah. So I appreciate the advice. Good. good for you. Mm -hmm. So what what do I like what do I like to do in this period of time when you're not when you're not directing? What do I like to do to do for fun? I like to travel. My big thing is traveling. I like to see the world and experience it all. I also do a lot of charitable work. So um, that's one of my joys. So um, seeing the world and helping others is basically what I really enjoy the most. Okay. Any chance I can get, yeah. Okay. So what do you think we can do to change the world to make the world better, to make the world better in, in your opinion? You know, making the world better is doing whatever you can, whether, you know, depending on, on what your passion is, whether it's feeding the homeless, um, you know, making someone's day, building, you know, thing. I do so many varied charities. You know, one of my charities is we give musical instruments to children in impoverished areas so that they can stay in music school five days a week after regular school is let out. You know, in that particular charity, we're monitoring kids' gang activity, their drug use, and giving them, you know, after school curriculums that they wouldn't normally be able to get. You know, I also do... I work with a charity that lights up hospitals in third world countries um, where, you know, without electricity, darkness can mean death because there's no light to operate. Um, you know, recently though, with the coronavirus and the amount of homeless people in LA, I do simple things like buying food and driving in my car and handing out meals and water to homeless. So, you know, changing the world is whatever you can do. People think it's got to be so grand or they don't have any money or they don't have any time. You can always make time. It changed one person's day and you've made a difference. Yeah, I guess that's true, yeah. So what so what, so what, what do I look for in an actor? I mean, you see me, what do you see as an actor? I mean, I don't look at a person and say, look at him as an actor. You have to read, uh, you know, you have to be auditioning for a role. You have to be right for it. Um, you know, somebody can not look like an actor at all and all of a sudden, you know, um, go into a character and be one of the best actors you've ever seen. Other people think just because they're a good looking person or whatever, they can walk in a room and they've got it. And they don't, they're horrible when the cameras, you know, um, turn on. So I don't think anybody looks at somebody and says, you're an actor. Okay. Have, you, have you ever wanted to be an actress, an actress yourself? Mm, not really. Um, I probably picked the wrong side. That side makes a lot more money than my side does. So, um, but no, I've never, I've, I've not really. I see, okay. Um, okay, um, so what do you see yourself, uh, so what do you see yourself down the line, uh, uh, down the line, I uh, guess? Uh, down the line, as far as now? Um, I just wanna get back on sets and produce again. Um, you know, every, everything that, like I said, we're, is at a standstill right now. We're venturing into reality a little bit, not much, but classy reality shows. We're going to get it more into some scripted TV as well. And um, yeah, I'm just doing what I'm doing. Okay. I, I, okay. Yeah. I, I hear you. Um, I, I guess that's true. Yeah. So, so what's the best, so what's the best thing in Wilson about, about, about being, being a director? What's the best thing about being a director? And we have to about being director. I'm not a director, so I, I, I can't say what the best thing is. I would think that directors um, love it because they love to create story and they love to bring, you know, characters to life. 
um, and bring a film, you know, together. But I, I am not a director, so I wouldn't be able to say that. Okay, okay, I think that's interesting. Um, yeah, and yeah, so um, so so um, I guess my next question is um, do 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 you think it's important it's important to have an education education to to, to fall back on in case it doesn't work out being being actually doesn't work out in in your opinion. A hundred percent. I mean, look, the film business, whether you're an actor, a producer, a director, is incredibly difficult. I think 1% make money and make a living. So um, I think it's very important, especially in this profession, to have something to fall back on, a, a second job of any kind. Plus, it, it, you know, it's important to have passion and, and um, like what you're doing and be able to pay your bills and be, you know, and, and go into acting without kind of the fear of, of um, how are you going to feed yourself tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I guess I should, yeah. So, so what gives you, so what gives you, gives you inspiration and hope? Make sure, make sure do what you want to do. I mean, I like telling stories. I've done it for so long now. Um, so to me, reading a great script that moves me or learning something from a script or seeing something go from the page to the screen um, just keeps me going. I, I really enjoy it. It's been a, a great business for me, but it's a much harder business now. I started in this industry at an easier time. Now with coronavirus and streaming, people think it's easier, it's actually harder. Mm -hmm. um, streaming doesn't quite pay as much as, as theatrical does, and it just makes it a bit more competitive and a little bit harder. Okay, okay, so, so, what, do you, so what, do you, what do you, I love, I love to travel for vacation, when you go on vacation? Anywhere warm. You know, I'm a beach girl, so give me any place warm um, around the world, and I love to go. Um, my last big trip was the Bahamas, and before that was Bali. I think my next trip, when the borders open, will be Thailand. So, um, you know, but I love South Africa. I loved Israel. Um, you know, I love historical things. So, anywhere. Yeah, I, I hear you. I, I definitely love, I love, love the warm weather, too, you know, so, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to, that's why I'm trying to be active get, and get down there, you know, because, you know, it's better than being here, being in Boston than, you know, I mean, well, it's better, yeah. well, it's better than being in California than being in Boston, you know, I think, you know. But yeah, cool. definitely. Yeah, um, yes. So, um, so what, so what part of you have worked on, on once the club is over, or over? What did you plan to do plan for? Well, we've got a movie that will be starting with Sony, hopefully this summer which is based on a real life um, situation. It was actually the first exorcism ever broadcast live on TV in the 70s and what happened to the family right after that. And then we're doing um, a big musical with TriStar, which is based on NSYNC. And these girls that were NSYNC's biggest fans and that they went actually on The Price is Right so that they could win the RV and so they would have wheels in a house to follow the group around. Um, for one summer and it's their story um, told with NSYNC. I mean, we've got a very big action movie um, that we're um, in, you know, in pre-production on right now um, with a company called Millennium Films, big actor waiting to attach right now that we just were told from his reps that he's coming on board, but I can't say who. Um, and then we're doing a female action movie as well. Um, and then we're switching to reality. As I said, um, we will be doing a show that's kind of Bear Grylls meets Bill Nye the Family Guy with the youngest African-American pilot to ever fly around the world. Um, and then um, we are going into scripted TV with a show called Ellis Island based on the real Ellis Island. So we're all over the place. Oh, wow, that sounds, that, that sounds like exciting. Yeah, you know, I can't, can I, yeah. When you come out, you know, I look forward to it now. And yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do something with your family. You're going to be pretty busy once the is over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And do you also um, look, uh, do you also look, look, look for music and soundtracks for the, for the movies as well? No, most, most movies that, you know, that we do is turned over to a music supervisor and it depends on the budget in the film to see which songs we're going after. And that's turned over to the music supervisor at the time. I mean, I, I assist in picking the songs that we use, but we don't just look for soundtracks. Okay, yeah, it's definitely. Um, okay, wow. So, so if you want to get in touch with you on social media, 
Are, are you on social media? If you want to touch I am. They can find me um, on Instagram at Cindy, C I N D Y, Cowan, C O W A N, 1000, at, no, oh, just 1000. <laughs> that was, I was about to get my email. Um, they can also find me on Twitter at the same thing. It's again, Cindy Cowan, the number 1000. Yeah, well, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah. And I guess, so I guess my last question is, is um, it is um if you could be any if you could be anyone anything in the world what would you want to be if you could be any anything in the world you want I want to be me. Yeah. I actually have the best life ever. I know most people don't answer it that way, but um I don't think there's anybody I'd rather be than me. I've had an amazing, amazing, amazing life and I'm just, you know, I'm blessed. So yeah. I'm content. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, you you tell your bless you're definitely a blessing to me, you know. Just this we talk to you after on my show talk to you, you know, and learn about you and, and about yeah. the and what you know what we can we can bring to Tebby, you know, stepping in on you. So yeah. I guess the point of staying in touch, you know, and hopefully yeah. I kind of talk in touch and thank you for having me and um and it was great. Good luck with your dreams and the show. Thank you. And I'll definitely thank you and I'll send it to any of you tonight, you know, okay. So I'll see you see it, okay? Got it. All right, you. Talk to you later. Bye yeah. everybody. See you. Thank you.